Friday, the 24th of uh, February. Of course, you know that Nigeria's, uh, Nigerians, about 60 million, 60 million registered voters go to the polls tomorrow for a transitional general elections. It's been hotly contested. It's been a very interesting week for Nigeria on the political side. It's also been a whole lot more interesting on the market side. The stock market defied the whole elections fever, 1.6% so far since the week started, roughly 2.5% or above, slightly above that, you know, which is about 2 and 3 quarters of a percent since the month started. Local investors have been piling for bargain hunting on the equity side, which and one of the analysts, uh, the CEO of an investment uh, securities firm, says was all about the confidence that the elections tomorrow will be free and fair and will give Nigerians the right precedent and all that is in the mix. So 0.60% on the upside yesterday with Lafarge Africa, the third largest cement maker listed on the NGX, added about 1.2%. Boa Foods was up. A couple of the banks, UBA, JITCO, Zenit Bank shares finished in the green territory, including FBN Holdings, the parent company of First Bank. All of that contributed to Nigeria's Thursday trading day. The market's been moving steadily. 180 billion naira in local currency was what the equity cap added to the top yesterday, standing at the doorsteps of a new threshold, 30 trillion naira. All of that, but we'll see how what Monday looks like the morning after the election. So that's your Nigeria's summary. It's been a very positive rallying week here in Lagos. The BRVN in Cote d'Ivoire was down by 0.07% Thursday. 1.35% jump for the Egyptian markets in Cairo, finishing off the market with today's start of the weekend. 17,003 on the EGX 30 index. The Nairobi market down by 0.36%, while the GSE went up to 1. 0.08% to 79,000, heading back towards 80,000 the day after Inok Gorongwana, the finance minister, presented the Treasury's budget, the budget for the Treasury for 2022-23 without look into 24-25 period, forecasting a stronger GDP, a lower deficit, and a few icing on the cake uh, for South Africans, including the diesel levy fund being extended, as well as the relief for South Africans on the back of COVID-19 pandemic. All of that playing into the markets as it were. But we've got a whole lot of more issues to deal with in South Africa this morning. Let's come announcing the incoming of a new CEO. But first, let's touch on with East Africa, where Kenya is looking right now whether to turn east or west as far as debts or loans concerned. So, but the William Rutgers administration has been trying to warm up more to China, where concessionary notes, uh, money is coming through, just as its big neighbor up to the north, that's uh, Ethiopia, uh, as it were. But the uh, Kenya's uh, revenue agency, the KRA's uh, chief executive or commissioner general has uh, left office in Beirut. He says he's going out of office for personal reasons, and um, Terim, head of the Kenya Revenue Agency, has just been announced, uh, Rispa Simu. Simu. Then the guy, the Etel, Kenya opening deal or talks for the sale of 30% of uh, its shares via the Nairobi Securities uh, Exchange because the regulation says that has to be done before the deadline expires in 2024. That will put more shares of Airtel Africa or Airtel Kenya in the hands of Kenyans themselves. That is some good news. I expect that to be positive for the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Uh, Kenya will start uh, exporting bulk tea and coffee to Slovakia in Eastern Europe, while Typho Gas of Tanzania, owned by a billionaire business tycoon, has been approved today. President William Ruto will be commissioning the massive multi-billion shillings cooking gas plants today. And that is what I call regional economic business. A Tanzanian business tycoon opened a big business in Kenya, and that is good news for everyone. So let's uh, talk more about Niger- Nigeria and West Africa. Of course, Nigeria's election is in everyone's cross. As yield went up at the primary market auction on Wednesday, conducted by the central bank after investors begin to price Nigeria's uh, bonds, treasury bills, and open market papers higher 
But again, stocks remain very hot. Bonds are also really hot. Naira bonds, as it were, 176 billion uh, total transactions in NTBs, open market operations, and, and bo- Naira bonds at the FMDQ Securities Exchange on Thursday. The Naira remain largely sluggish against the U.S. dollar, all in the run-up to the elections happening in 24 hours' time. And the National Council of Privatization in Nigeria yesterday approved Mainstream Energy Solutions Limited as the preferred leader for the Zungeru hydropower plant based in Niger State. That's all part of getting Nigeria's energy a rich resource that the country sorely needs. And Gathers has postponed his bilateral mission to China until late March. That meeting was to be, mission was to be uh, led by the finance minister, Ken Oforiata. And Mali is looking to uh, mobilize about uh, 580 billion CFA francs from the uh, West African uh, markets and outside the region just to support his energy sector. Good. So let's just look at South Africa. Of course, I was talking about ESCOM this morning, making an announcement that the exit or the immediate exit yesterday of uh, his CEO, the Reuters, uh, uh, has been accepted. So he's, he's departed yesterday. This morning, a new CEO was brought into office uh, very quickly as an interim group chief executive officer of the troubled energy uh, utility giant. The... Uh, the uh, the immediate past CEO, uh, the Rota, was, uh, uh, according to news sources, booted out because he said about one billion rand corrupt uh, monies uh, involved in ESCOM on a monthly basis. He gave that, uh, he said that in an interview, uh, uh, it's one of the media houses, uh, news houses in South Africa, and he was uh, asked to step down with immediate effect. He was also initially scheduled to step down much later in the coming months, but he's got to leave right away. Corruption is one key issue that is still hanging around President Cyril Ramaphosa's administration. As far as ESCOM is concerned, which got uh, a debt relief of about 250 billion rand in, t- in Wednesday's uh, Ino Godongwana's um, budget uh, speech. So Zimbabwe has a new thinking and a new approach, which has been tabled, which was tabled yesterday at the debt restructuring uh, a a meeting that was held, a grand meeting it was yesterday, a kind of a conference in in, in Zimbabwe with President uh, Mnagangwa uh, leading the conversation, as well as the EFDB president, Dr. Kumi Adesha, and a few others adding voice that Zimbabwe should no longer be defined by its past, but by its future his potentials and promises. The, the AFDB chief, Akumi Adishina, says the youths, millions of Zimbabweans who are never part of President Mugabe's, late Mugabe's administration, should not suffer for what happened during the Mugabe's era and that the world, the Western powers, should give Zimbabwe a new lease of life. So, the initial plan to repay $3.5 billion to white farmers whose lands were seized back some 10, 20 years ago under President Mugabe, the late Mugabe, will now be done in a 10-year period. And Zimbabwe says it could offer bonds to cover part of that $3.5 billion. There'll be no land exchange for that deal. And that is now the new deal on the table, the new terms which was announced yesterday. So Eskom got uh, Khalib Kasim as the new uh, CEO. Discovery uh, posted a double digit uh, earnings for profit for the half year, but says there's still no cash dividend on the table for shareholders. And just as Nigeria and uh, the uh, French-speaking countries in West Africa, the Central Bank of Namibia, or the Bank of Namibia, uh, has now floated a uh, newly redesigned or modified uh, Namibian dollar 20 and uh, 200 Namibian dollar notes. That is now being circulated and being introduced to Namibians uh, in the manner of speaking. We've seen a number of countries in, in Africa, a few, uh, just beginning to redesign some of their currency notes and bringing a couple of those new notes onto uh, markets or circulation. So let's just get to North Africa. Of course, Egypt is closed today for business until Sunday, the start of the business. But we've got a couple of headline news to look through because Egypt is uh, validating its first Sukuk bond 
more than $5 million has been raised in the first initial offering. Nigeria has done roughly $750 billion in local currencies in Sukuk offerings over the past six to seven years. The net foreign direct investments into Egypt surged about 94%, about $3.3 billion in the first quarter of the country's 2022-2023 uh, period. And that's part of the economic data we got in the week. Snap of Morocco, which is listed on the Casablanca Stock Exchange uh, reporting about a 2.3% turnover increase uh, for its full year 2022. And the Minister of Finance of uh, Morocco says the country got about uh, $1.8 billion in support from the World Bank, while the German cable maker Helicobel is opening a factory facility site in Morocco. And that's about it all for today on your Frontier Opening Bell. I am Bosun Amafaya. It's the day before Nigeria's general elections. Keep your eyes on the numbers and we'll get back to you when the markets reopen on um, Monday. Of course, a number of businesses in Nigeria are already shutting their physical offices until the 3rd or the 6th of uh, March. There are a bit of attentions around the upcoming presidential and hotly contested National Assembly elections. But let's leave it there for today. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.